Order up! What is up? Taryn Williams, and I'm back with a brand new episode of Order Up Podcast. So in this episode, I was deciding on what I wanted to talk about. I got a couple of things in mind. But recently, I got a Nintendo Switch. I bought a Pokemon Shield and Super Smash Bros. Uh, 4 or Smash Ultimate, whatever you want to call it. The newest Smash Brothers, the last one that they've done. Which could be the last Smash Brothers ever. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about that on another podcast. But I picked up uh, Pokemon Shield was the other game I got. And I realized I haven't played a Pokemon game in a long time. Like I looked at some reviews. I saw some comments. I see what people felt about it. You know, their pros and cons. So I figured why not do a podcast of how I feel about it. Because I think I have a pretty unbiased opinion. Because the last Pokemon I actually finished was actually Pokemon Ruby. Which was, I don't even know when it was. I, it had to be, well, it was more than 10 years ago. So, uh, Ruby was the last one that I personally played. I haven't played one since. So, I miss Black and White. I miss Sun and Moon. I miss, you know, let's, uh, what is it? let's go Pikachu. Let's go Eevee. So, I missed a bunch of Pokemons kind of in that time frame. So, this is the first Pokemon adventure I've played in a very long time. And I figured, you know what? Maybe I should give my own little opinion on the game so far. I think I got maybe about an hour hour and a half of gameplay not too long i've been playing it that much um i'm not too advanced in the story so i can't spoil anything for you guys but this would be kind of my overall feel of the game so far remembering some of uh the cons that i saw online and kind of give my pros and cons so i figured maybe i'll start with the pros like i really like how the game looks like the game does look like the game boy in hd like it's it's better like it looks very nice i do like some of the quality of life things like I got the escape rope. I'm not sure if the other Pokemon games did this, but there's the escape rope. Before you had to buy escape ropes, and you know you you know if you're in a dungeon, they get you out the dungeon. But if you ran out of escape ropes, you had to take the long way. You had to fight all the random Pokemon on your way out of the cave. But in Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield, the escape rope is a key item, and you can just use it as many times as you want. I'm not sure if the other games have done that. Again, I haven't played one in a really long time. But I thought that was actually a really nice thing to do. Just the quality of life thing. So you don't have to spend your money on that. I like that there's kind of, I like the story of Shield and Shield, where there's an actual story. You know, because usually Pokemon is just like, oh, you know, you start the game. Hey, go see Professor. You know, go see Professor Oak if you're, think, if you're talking red and blue. Go see the Professor. Get your Pokemon. You know, you pick first. Your rival picks the opposite type like picks the type that will beat your pokemon and then y'all go about your day you know you go about your day basically you go about your journey you know this one's a lot different it's more of it's a little more story driven like your rival is also your best friend so y'all kind of have this friendship but you also want to make each other better um your friend's bro well your friend's name is hop so hop's brother's name is leon and he's the pokemon champion and so hop wants to be leon so he idolizes him uh leon comes back in order to, you know, Leon comes back and he gives you your first Pokemon with you and Hop. It's just kind of, it's funny, like the beginning of the game, I'm going to talk about the beginning of the game really briefly. It feels like the beginning of Pokemon. If you remember the very first episode of Pokemon where Ash, I forget, I forget how it goes, but it's Ash and Pikachu. And at the end of that episode, they're laying on the grass and they look up and they see Ho-Ho, which is in Pokemon, which is in, uh, you know, silver and gold. And Ash tries to, you know, use the Pokedex on him. It doesn't work. The Pokedex hasn't been updated to know what that Pokemon is. And Shield and Shore kind of start that very same way where there's um, a Pokemon, I think it's called Wooloo. They're like the sheep type. It goes into these woods. The woods are like, you're not supposed to go in the woods. It's the um, off-limits area. It's a restricted area. But you and Hop go into the woods, and there's this mysterious Pokemon that you can't hit. And you don't know what it is. The name doesn't pop up. You can't hit it. There's this weird smoke. It just kind of stares at you. And I thought that was a really nice callback to kind of the Pokemon anime series where Ash will see like a legendary Pokemon, but have no idea what it is. And you spend like the entire journey learning about this Pokemon. And eventually you see it. You get the opportunity to catch it. I thought that was a really cool way of starting the journey, um, which I really like. What I thought was a pro, just a nice little throwback to kind of then. You know, to kind of some of the animes. I like that the Pokemon League, it feels like an actual league where instead of just like, oh, yeah, you know, you go collect these gym battles and you just go randomly to collect gym battles. 
And I kind of like how, like, in the Pokemon game, they never really, like, you go to each city to collect badges. There's no real reason to. But in Shield and Sword, uh, Hop tells you, like, oh, you have to go to these specific gyms in order to do it. Also, in order to compete in the gym challenges, which is called the gym challenge in Shield and Sword, you have to be endorsed. Like, you have to get an endorsement from, uh, from somebody. Leon, you know, being Hop's brother, you and Hop fight it out. You earn Leon's endorsement. So the Pokemon champion endorsed the two of you. And then you go register. You know, you go register. You pick a number. You get a uniform. So every single gym battle you do, you have to wear your uniform, which I think is kind of cool. It's kind of so it feels like it feels like an actual league. It feels like an esport. You know, since esports is a very big thing in 2019 and moving forward, it's kind of cool that they kind of incorporated the esports vibe into their latest Pokemon game, which I thought that was really cool. Just you know, you pick your own number. I kind of wish you could customize your uniform. That would be nice if you can just kind of just color do it for you. It'd be cool if there was like a wins and loss system too. It's kind of cool. So like if like every time you battle somebody on a route, like it will record in like your uh, wristband or something. You get like a wins and loss record, and it would be kind of cool if you could actually lose and win, and that would kind of change the story a little bit. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. But I like that. I like how big the cities feel. Like the cities feel really massive. Like even in the old Game Boy Pokemon game, the cities felt big. You couldn't really get the scale, but they all did. They you know they all felt different. You kind of get to see that visualized in 3D now on Sealed and Sword, uh, Sealed and Sword on the Switch, which is really nice. Um, it's kind of a couple of other things. I like you get money right. I don't like your mom gives you money before you leave on your adventure. I'm not sure how much money she gives you, but she gives you a really solid amount of money, which is nice because you don't do that many battles early on, so you don't actually have that much money to buy potions and stuff. But one of the uh, one of my favorite things about the early part of the game is that you can um you can like actually have a balanced team early on because they have what's called like the wild area. The wild area is kind of like the safari zone, but you don't have a time limit and you don't have to pay to get in. It is kind of just an open world, or, just, or not an open world, but like an open area where Pokemon roam free and this and that. And one thing I really did appreciate was one of the cool I know is right off the bat is you can have a balanced team early on where you can have a bunch of different types and types that kind of complement each other. Because right now I have uh, two fire types, a water type, an electric type. So that's already that kind of covers a lot. And then I have uh, what is it called? Ricky D, which is the owl, which is like the blue owl Pokemon, which I think is flying and dark. And then I have uh, the Skunky, which is, I think, dark and normal. And it's just like you really can create like a balanced team right off the bat. So I have a little bit of everything, and I can kind of take on whoever I need to, and I can switch out. Because, you know, in the early Pokemon games, that shit sucked. If you had Charmander, you had to go against Brock ass, you know, first gym battle with Charmander. All you got is Scratch. Bruh. And then, like, there aren't too many Pokemon. You got a Charmander, a Rattata, and, like, a Metapod. What can do against Brock and the damn Onyx? You know, so it was kind of harder in the early games, unless you pick, you know, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and whatnot. But if you were me and you rock with Charmander, you know, you're kind of screwed. But, um, but yeah, I like that. I like that. Those are some of my pros for the game. Was, I really like that. And some of the cons, I definitely understand. And one of the biggest things that I saw, and it, I really resonate with that, is Pokemon Studios sort of needs voice acting. Like, it didn't have to be all voice acted, but it needs some voice acting. Like, come on, Nintendo, Game Freak. We knew y'all got the money for it. That's the next evolution of Pokemon. Like, get some voice acted. I was talking to uh, my chef at work, and we were talking. I was laughing. I was like, yo, y'all need voice actors. I do it. You know, I be a youngster on Route 5. Like, what's up? Like, I'll voice them, you know. You don't even got to pay me. Just give me the game. Like, you know, I'll go and just feed me. Let me get a copy of the game, and I'm on my merry way. But yeah, like they voice acting is definitely missing. Like even like uh like Yakuza doesn't have all voice acting clips. You know, if you play the Yakuza game, they have a lot of voice acting and stuff, but a lot of it's in text. You could just mix and match it. When it's a, you know, when it's a cinematic or like an important part, voice acting. When it's kind of, you know, a side quest or something a little more laid back, you can use text. Another thing that I think is really important is your protagonist being the silent type sucks like come on we're in 2019 you know you're not you know the hero of time you're not link you should talk like it's the whole battle 
and you're doing this whole journey, you're collecting Pokemon, you should be able to talk or at least have a conversation wheel, which I think that would be dope if they had like a conversation wheel and then you can kind of change your, you know, your um, personality based off of your conversations and do like, you know, Mass Effect. It can, I mean, it doesn't have to be Paragon or Renegade, but you can do like humble, bad, you know, like hunger, um, hunger, humble, egotistical, you know, something else. You know, just like you can do like three different or like neutral. Maybe you can do like something like that and you can be more humble. You can be more arrogant. You can be just like they should have incorporated that. Cause I think that's very important Pokemon because you one thing that makes Pokemon Pokemon is the characters and how they act. We have people that are very charismatic and like life like like hop i can't stand hop that's another thing i'm about to talk about about hop because he annoys me but uh <laughs> but like you know people that are charismatic you have people that are kind of laid back and chill you have people that are like i'm the best and you can't be like you you should be able to develop that in your character because i think that would make the game a lot more interested your character have a little more life things like that another kind is hop just because he just talks too much and you don't really get the banter with him he does all the talking and you don't really get to say much. You just have to deal with him talking. And I'm like, uh, come on, man. Stop talking. But I do like that your rival is your best friend. Like, I think that's kind of a cool dynamic. But, yeah, I was like, uh, hop, shut up. Like, just, just leave me alone. Let me catch my Pokemon. Just go <laughs> go over there. But, um, but yeah, like, it's that, um, like, the pop, like, NPCs will just pop in and out of the city. You can kind of see it. That doesn't bother me too much, personally. But I can understand, like, you, they should just be there. Like, you should be able to see them in the draw distance. Like, instead of you getting closer, people just popping in and out. Like, you know, again, it's the first one on the Switch. Or it's, technically it's the second one, because, well, I forget what, like, uh, EV and Pikachu. I forgot what they, I haven't played them, so I don't know what they look like. But, yeah, I mean, it's kind of the next evolution of Pokemon. They should get that worked out. I know a lot of people aren't getting Sword and Shield because of some of these reasons, which is fine. Like, if you've been paying, like, you've been playing Pokemon for goddamn 20 years, like, you sh- you could skip one. It's it's all good. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, like, the pop-ins, the, vo- yeah, the voice acting, t- for me, I think is a really big deal. Um, I'm trying to think. There was a couple of other cons that i was like i I do kind of agree like maybe this pokemon should have had all new pokemon but if you think about it after a while you can only use an electric rat so much you can also you can only use so many real world animals and turn them around so many times you know yeah so i guess it'd be cool if it was an all new pokemon which would kind of give there was the galar region like its own flavor i think that would have been cool but also not bad with seeing you know like growl if early on and seeing the caterpie like you cannot have caterpie like in the beginning like what's wrong with y'all it was just for nostalgia so we got that we got uh no voice acting the pop in i haven't been online yet they said like the online the frame rate drops a lot when you're online in the wild area which i haven't actually seen yet because i haven't really come on my online yet when i'm playing the game like i have the wi-fi connected i just haven't gone online the do that to see how the game handles that uh but but yeah for, for the most part it's not too many cons like for me personally i think cause i just haven't played one in so long so my eyes are a lot different than a lot of other people so i'm not as picky on some things but i'm definitely been enjoying it definitely enjoy pokemon shield definitely enjoy having the switch so yeah, that's kind of my brief little rundown of pokemon shield so far maybe i could do like an update maybe i'll do like a part two of this after I played the game a lot longer, see like some other things pop off, and I can give you guys my own opinion on that. This isn't really a review. This isn't even really a retrospective. This is me just talking about Pokemon Shield and just kind of my pros and cons so far from a guy that just hasn't played a Pokemon game in a long time. But anyway, but thank you for checking out this brand new episode of the Oreo Podcast. You can find it on SoundCloud, Slice and Dice and Gaming Entertainment on YouTube, Slice and Dice and Gaming dot com, which is my website of spotify i think it's on apple Podcasts. it's on um i can't think of the name pocket cast a couple other places it's you know we we make it moves um definitely checking out definitely check out this video go back and listen to some of the other episodes i'm sorry that if you look at it on spotify the episodes are a little out of order i had to delete the first two episodes because they didn't process through google play on the Google Play Store, so they are, I had to get rid of them and re-upload them so Google Play Store would see them. So they're a little out of order, but it should go, but now it should go 8, 9, 
it'll go in numerical order after this. Like one and two are just kind of in a weird spot. It's because I had to re upload them. So sorry for that brief uh, inconvenience, but they're all there. They're all numbered. You can be able to pick which one you want to listen to. Um, again, thank you so much for support. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast up to this point. We're getting not only to the end of the year, but the end of a decade. This is crazy. Um, it's been a blessing, but thank you all for listening and following me on this journey. If you would have told me a year ago I would have a podcast, I wouldn't believe you because I wouldn't have been like, well, what, a podcast? I don't need a podcast. But it's just something that I really enjoy doing, and I think being able to talk and give your opinion is very important in, in a safe environment. And you can agree, you can disagree. Of course, you can find me across the board on all different social networks. You can find me on Facebook, Taryn Jalil Williams, which is my real name. You can find me on Twitter, straight underscore cooking with no G. So straight underscore C-O-O-K-I-N. You can find me on Instagram, Digital Chef 35 And I don't have a Snapchat, so don't look for me there. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you in the next video I upload. I'll see you in the next podcast. Later.